this works as far as the stream goes. I'll give everybody a few minutes to join. Also checking to see if this is actually going anywhere. <laughs> to see if I can find a link so I can share it out there onto the World Wide Web. But, if this works, should be cool. Whereas the guy Ryan says in House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn, how does it feel? Cool, yeah. Which is always weird. Weird line. Just get this link shared with uh, some social media stuff and then we'll get started. I guess we need to remember to look at the camera. Alright, so just a moment here. As we look and see how many people are going to join us. So I'm using uh, OBS Studio, which Seems cool for setting everything up, but just have to run YouTube in a different browser, I guess, to do the chat and all that jazz. <coughs> so just posting to uh, Twitter and a couple of other sites about the stream, and then we'll get started. should be cool. I thought it was cool to uh, uh, take a look at, but I figure this, this streaming about this would be better than, uh, than uh, just blogging about it. Yeah, yeah, you can probably hear uh, my cruising blast. So where I'm at, it's uh, pretty early. I just opened about, oh gosh, 30 minutes ago. I haven't had any customers in yet. But of course, we may have somebody, uh, a customer of mine, uh, come in here, buy some tokens, and I'll have to turn more games on. So we'll see if I get any interruptions. Let me adjust this very professional as I do things here um, <clears throat> yeah okay alrighty so um, yeah so I was uh, recently oh, I'm going blurry there um, <laughs> so I um, am friends with a producer at Sega Japan who sent me this link the other day to a virtual 3D walk around of a Genda Sega Entertainment Arcade and uh, I had to ask somebody uh, where this was exactly and it's in Akihabara and uh, this location has been around for a while and of course with Genda uh, taking over and the other issues that have been going on with the uh, pandemic there there's been changes and whatnot but uh, what I'm going to do is uh, just walk around uh, this arcade and we'll take a look at it together um, but it's a, a pretty cool place um, I know it says uh, floor 3 I think it is in there so uh, let me minimize this window and let me reload it as it has a cool little animation when you first pop in which is this right here so as you can see the whole floor of the arcade there and showing the, um, uh, the venue in 3d and zoom out just a little bit there and but let's take a look around so I guess that's where you come in and you got your staff only place there 
Uh, we'll end around here and start about here, of course, but um, with these helpful Sega employees, um, there are uh, little dots with information on each thing, the uh, each game, and uh, additional information, of course, it's in Japanese. Uh, but uh, you have Retro Around, the world is here. And what that's referring to is uh, the history the, of arcades that's in this um, particular spot. And so it's a little bit unusual, I believe, uh, to come across Japanese arcades that have a lot of very older games. And in this one even has a computer space, which is, uh, uh, I guess, hard enough to find overall, but just not uh, very common in Japan. Uh, but before we uh, walk down the aisle there, we've got um, over here, they've got their VR set up and looks like they've got uh, the cards that you need to buy to, um, uh, let me check here, looks like my video is going a little weird. Okay. Um, so they've got Beat Saber Arcade. Now this is the version that was released in Asia, uh, the Korean version. There is a version that was available uh, here through a in the United States through a company known as Vrsenal, which was a very different cabinet. It had like an 80-inch 4K screen, and then it had the um, the overhead gantry that held the VR headset and the controls, um, but that one is no longer available to um, offer uh, or to produce. Um, and so Facebook, for some reason, has often had um, some things against out-of-home entertainment or arcades, and, and so it's often been difficult for anybody who wants to do a VR arcade sort of thing um, with Oculus Quest or Oculus Rift. Um, to be able to do that and because they always put the kibosh on it I guess you could say well, let's zoom in over here really quick um, this one right here I'm not familiar with um, not seen it but it looks like it's a horror game sort of thing and then a nice little setup they have here is the Astro City Mini and so they have that set up with a nice proper sized joystick as well as a little miniature game pad and stuff then you can go right ahead but, um, okay, so I got a question here in the chat that's not related to this. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard of anybody who's picked up their brand new Cruise and Blast with the 2020 updates. Uh, so I'm sure there are some out there. Recently, Rothschilds did reveal to me that they sold over 10,000 of them. Uh, 10,000 Cruise and Blast units. Now, of course, there are a lot of places that have them. Um, four of them, like I believe, Fred and Dave and Buster's has two or four. Um, I have to be over here, so uh, yeah, I just アストロシティミニは、アストロシティ同様、受精の美しいエアロデザインを再現。6分の1サイズに縮小された、コンパクトな本体に、LEDを使用したイルミネーション。chat there I guess we got a little bit of latency um, so I'm just using the microphone that's uh, okay can't hear me over the Astro City mini commentary all right um, well I guess if you bear with me for a second I got another microphone a lapel mic so let me see if that will work any better Uh, it's disappeared on me. I guess. Oh, here we go. So, okay, so you can all hear me now. Okay, I'll just stand here so uh, I guess you'll see my face a little closer. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and speak directly into the microphone as I'm supposed to. Anyways, uh, so yeah, as you come in uh, to this location, you have some UFO catchers. There's always some UFO catchers in arcades around Japan. 
Um, but as these employees show here, it's the best playground to go to, and you can get a little bit of hints of uh, what's in store there um, in the background. Don't lose to Corona. And then this employee popped up, come visit Sega Building 3rd. And so, it's, again, as I was told, this is in Akihabara, and so uh, I'm not sure exactly where there, but uh, somewhere around there. And also let me see my mic. Sorry, I'm just uh, double checking here to see if my I can adjust any other options on my microphone. So I'll assume you can all still hear me okay. All right, so uh, when you come over here, they have quite a cool section of Sega arcade machines, and they've set it up kind of like a museum. And so uh, you can, if you're there and you can read Japanese, you can read about each game. Now in this, you can see, uh, get a Wikipedia link or a Sega history link to each game to describe what it is. And so over here, let's see how close we can get. Uh, we got the, um, the enclosed or cockpit version of OutRun, the original OutRun, and then next to it, OutRun 2 SP. Uh, both fantastic games, which I'm sure many of you have played. And, oh, okay, so I guess uh, there was a Sega event that showed this location. Gotcha. Uh, I missed that one, so. <laughs> um, and then, let's step over here. We have Radmobile. Uh, now, this one I've always read about, but I've never seen one here in the States. Um, this one, for those who don't know, I mean, apart from being a, um, a simulator, whoops, I don't want to do a measurement. Ah. Go to the X here, sorry. Uh, let's go back here. So, Radmobile, um, very cool game, and uh, had a very nice motion simulator cabinet. Uh, you can see the tailpipes that they put into it, and it's always nice when arcade manufacturers add those little details in there, which uh, don't often show up uh, in, in a lot of the titles, but sometimes they still do. Uh, like, everybody's been talking about Cruise and Blast, and, uh, you know, that does have some uh, nice tires and hubcaps on the back as well and um, but I haven't seen one with tailpipes on it uh, in a very long time but uh, this is also the very first game that starred Sonic the Hedgehog and this was released a uh, short time before Sonic the Hedgehog was released on the Sega Genesis and so um, it's technically the uh, first game with, to star Sonic on it um, but very cool piece, and of course we have a Space Harrier here, a sit-down Space Harrier to the Fantasy Zone with the little seat, and I've seen a number of different Space Harrier cabinets here in the States, and uh, one or two available locally before. I've just never had the pleasure of grabbing one, uh, which I'd like to one day. Uh, we got an original afterburner. A lot of them that you see out there, especially the uprights, are in a different design. This would be the Japanese design, but um, I have an afterburner too here that's an upright, and it's got the curved uh, piece over the front screen, a slightly smaller screen than this one. Um, but you don't see the very first Afterburner out there too often because it was usually converted to Afterburner 2. However, this does say Afterburner 2 when you hover over this, but over there it looks like 1. Um, we've got a Thunderblade. Uh, this is another one, like, actually I should say, for, uh, yeah, Radmobile, and an original Afterburner, Thunderblade, and uh, Sky Target. I don't think I've seen those in person. Here. Maybe I saw a Sky Target once, but uh, yeah, Thunderblade, uh, another cool helicopter simulator from Sega. Um, I can't remember what hardware that ran on. Was it System C2? No, that was Radmobile. Um, maybe somebody else can remember for me. <laughs> um, and then you have Sky Target. And of course, one thing that collectors can also appreciate is that uh, this location keeps all of their old CRTs going. And so no LCDs, as far as I can tell, and 
those machines, which is, uh, oh, we got the employees still sticking around there, staying in place. <laughs> um, but it, it is tough to keep a lot of CRTs going these days as parts become um, difficult to find or sometimes there are reproduction parts but one thing that I've come across is that a lot of the like the flybacks which are these big um, enclosed coils that are very important to the function of a CRT um, when those go out usually the I mean the whole thing just won't work but in replacing them even if you get the correct model the new reproductions oftentimes have different dimensions and so you have to do break some things to fit them in there which sucks Anyways, um, we have F1 exhaust note, and this is another one that I have never seen here in the States, um, but um, it was a little bit before Sega started going 3D with everything, um, and of course here's a popular one that I do not believe uh, you, any of these have been ported to console. As far as I'm aware, again, somebody can correct me on that, uh, but Scud Race and Daytona USA 2. Uh, of course, they don't have an eight-player setup here to enjoy. They just don't seem to have the space that they want to dedicate on that. But, uh, yeah, if you're into racing and you're in Japan, which, of course, I don't think most of us can go there right now uh, due to the pandemic, then this is a great place to go for um, racing. And they even have the little uh, racing flags all over the place, which is a cool idea. I may have to try that uh, over my spot. Now, uh, this is, I was told this is one of the things that has changed about this location. I guess it used to be more just focused on Sega stuff, but uh, with Agenda, um, they've added some other brands of games to the whole mix, and that right here is the HD version of the what's usually known as the Gundam Pods. Uh, the exact name that they call it over in Japan is escaping me right now. Or I guess I should just hover over it. <laughs> uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Battlefield Bonds, or Bonds of the Battlefield. And so there is a sequel to this that is launching, I think, this month, or maybe next month, which doesn't have the dome screen around it. Uh, but um, it's extremely expensive, and for a game that expensive, it's like one of the most expensive standalone arcade machines I have ever heard of. I think they they're around anywhere between seventy to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. There's like different um, ways that you can purchase them depending on uh, how much revenue share you want to give to Bandai Namco. And so, um, yeah, it's a very, very expensive proposition. But, very, very cool game. You know, Japan is often known for this type of cabinet. Let's walk over here. And you also have the pilot term terminal for the Gundam pods. And then you have a very nice setup of some Cyber Troopers Virtual On. And some of the time they have these videos where an employee explains more about the game and shows it, which is pretty cool. Um, but it looks like they've got uh, four of them here and there's a terminal over there. But I'm going to turn around here and look at a few of the games that you can see right here. Manix TT Super Bikes, or Super Bike, sorry. <laughs> um, I had the, or this, I didn't, I haven't owned this game, but um, the first arcade that I worked for, uh, Family Entertainment Center, had, I wonder, can't remember if they had two or four of them. Uh, they also had a Suzuka 8 Hours by Namco. Um, you got an upright crazy taxi, which you do see uh, out here in the States every once in a while. Here's a rare one. Um, I've seen this once before, an emergency call ambulance. Um, and so this was made back in the kind of the age close to crazy taxi where Sega was coming up with a bunch of like uh, career games uh, of you know, putting you in the seat of an ambulance driver or a fighter pilot or an airline pilot or any of those things. And so uh, not very common. And then we've got, um, I think that's Thrill Drive 3 by Konami. Um, if it's not Thrill Drive, then I cannot remember. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, on the other side, uh, next to the Manix TT, you've got AB Cop. And this is another one that I've never seen in person here in the States. I know it was released here. Um, but just not as common to find as the two other games next to it, such as uh, Super Hang-On. Oh, and the employees popped up again. 
but you can tell looking at this one just how worn it is from people like putting their hands over it and rubbing the original blue paint off and so this is very much a well used game but looks like they this location has really kept up on the maintenance for these games which is something you want from every arcade that you go to all right wandering over here there's the pilot terminal and it looks like oh okay they is that a different version or I guess they may, may have them all linked and so they have even more stuff to promote uh, virtual on I guess it's too bad Sega doesn't have a new version of that available for us right now right <laughs> maybe one day um, and then over here I got some interesting things before we go into this section oops so we got a wild riders um, I think that was a Sega Hikaru board game, um, just uh, which was used in Planet Harriers. That was a follow-up to the Naomi, but uh, since it was never consoleized, it uh, just didn't get a lot of um, attention. At least I think so. I could be wrong on some of these. I haven't checked System16.com in a while. And of course, you have Prop Cycle from Namco. Um, but lots of racing games in this location. And then we get to this area over here. This is where they call it Retro World as well. So let's jump here. Got a drink vending machine, a Coca-Cola vending machine. And okay, yeah, this is another virtual on. Virtual on. And let's see, what do we got here? Virtual Fighter 2. So I do have one of those, the US version, not the uh, candy cab version. And it does not say what this is. It's a fighting game, but I can't tell um, what that is exactly. And this one must be a shoot 'em up. And same with this one, but I guess my uh, normal skills of identifying games just from a screen or two are failing me on these particular ones. Uh, this one looks like a cave shooter possibly. Um, only a single shot button too. And over here on the other side, hey, LA Machine Guns. And here in the US usually when you see this one it's in the bigger cabinet, but once in a while you can come across this uh, smaller CRT version. Uh, yep, and they have a video of that there. Oh, and here's a rare one, uh, Gogol 13, a sniping game. So if you haven't seen this one, because here in the States, I, I this is another one I've never seen here. I don't know if it ever really got uh, much uh, distribution out here uh, because it was you know, kind of silent scope. Of course, Golgo 13 is a much uh, bigger property in Japan uh, than something like uh, silent scope might have been. I uh, hope I'm not wrong on that. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, at least here in the States, uh, not as many people are familiar with Golgo as they would be of uh, something like Silent Scope, which, of course, Silent Scope didn't need a license. Uh, course, now we're in the age where everything needs a license to get noticed. Time Crisis 2, which I'm sure all of you or many of you have played before, and looks like hard to tell if the, those aren't original guns, but I don't know, maybe in the Japanese version did come with black ones. Let's go here. Uh, we have Ninja Assault. That's one that I've seen a few times here. And then Virtual Cop 2 and The Lost World, although it looks like these ones might be out of order at the moment. Possibly. Yeah. But uh, one thing I'd love to see one day is a Virtual Cop 3. And so not a lot of people know that that exists. Um, it was released 2005, 2006. Um, and it did have a little bit of distribution in uh, Europe and the States, but not much. And so uh, a lot of people don't know about it. Um, and here's the Japanese version of Pac-Man Battle Royale, which um, as far as I'm aware, the only difference was the marquee, really. Um, there's not a lot of text that you need in that particular game. And then before we focus on those, they have a row of House of the Dead games. And so they have Typing of the Dead. Um, which I think I saw at California Extreme. Uh, the original House of the Dead, House of the Dead 2, and House of the Dead 4. Why no House of the Dead 3? I don't know. Uh, but uh, kind of looks like they don't exactly have the space. Maybe they could throw it right there, but that would make that 
kind of tight, <laughs> but uh, either way, oh, and I didn't notice this before, uh, so the control panel for this, this was the Japanese control panel for House of the Dead 4, which was far cooler than the uh, US and European versions, which were basically just black metal boxes instead of these cool molded zombie heads and everything. And so, uh, they always get the better stuff over there, don't they? <laughs> Alright, now to the unusual part of this particular arcade. And um, and that's because in Japan, well, here in the States, uh, we have tons of retro arcades, retrocades if you want to call them that, especially with bars, and lots of bars have older games in them. But in Japan, usually the classics you might come across are in candy cabs, anything that's JAMA. Uh, but pre-JAMA stuff, as far as I'm aware, it's hard to come across. It's, uh, it's pretty rare. Usually they're in collections, and it's very likely that this is not, these particular games are being rented out to the location as opposed to being owned by the location. Um, Oftentimes, if you have somebody who owns them, they know how to fix them, and so that's less of a headache for the location who may not be as technically versed or trained into how to repair some of these older machines. But as you can see here, um, they have an Atari Star Wars, um, and I'm sure that's always a lot of fun to keep going just because of the vector, color vector monitor, but awesome game. Uh, Space Invaders, and I think that's a Galaxian? Let's see. Oh no, that is... Oh, um... It's not Hang On, it's Head On uh, by Sega. And so, before Pac-Man, there were a number of uh, games that were... Um, uh, there, there were all these racing in a maze games where you collected dots. And so this is essentially what um, influenced Pac-Man. And so, although looking at the screen, it looks like it's Space Invaders. So, I don't know why this says that other game, but anyways, um, we have another one that also is not very well known here, and it's called Frogs. It's not Frogger, <laughs> but what you are is you're a frog on a pond, and you have to jump around and collect flies, and dragonflies, and other bugs that uh, fly down, and you have to collect them with your long tongue, and um, so pretty simple game, just not known here. Um, and then here is the first Japanese racing arcade game. And so the, the very first racing arcade game was made by Atari. It was called Grand Track 10. Um, but almost around the exact same time, Taito had developed Speed Race. And so um, very, very old school. I think this was like 1974. Um, but you can see it had a stick shifter on it. and or if you want to call that a stick, a lever shifter. Um, but a lot of these games that were pre-Space Invaders, they didn't have levels, it was you versus time. And so uh, you just had to get as far as you can or collect, uh, eat as many bugs as you could before the time ran out. And so that's how a lot of the scoring systems on those ones worked. And then we have these uh, historical classics, an Atari Pong and a nutting computer space. But uh, what they've done is they've modified it here, so I guess they don't want people mucking around with the controller there, and so they've tied it into a Sega Blast City cabinet, and that's where you have your controls. Uh, but it is the single-player version, not the uh, two-player version of the game that did exist, um, but I think that was a little harder to come across. So if uh, you really, really wanted to play um, the first mass-produced video arcade game, you can in uh, Akihabara. And then uh, we have some additional candy cabs. You have Tower of Draga there. Thanks for it, uh, mentioning it there. <laughs> um, is that Legend of Kage? I can't tell. Um, hard to say on all of those. Oh, uh, Super Contra, I think. Contra or Super Contra? And not sure. And so, uh, for the most part, we're done there. Looks like they've got some prize things. Is that Pachinko? I don't think so. It almost looks like Pinball. Or that might be Pachinko. Um, but that looks like a very old school style of Pinball before they had flippers. And uh, so there are a few of them out there. 
But yeah, that, uh, oops, the employees are over there playing games. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, that is uh, this uh, cool location in uh, by Agenda Sega Entertainment in Akihabara, Tokyo. And so uh, hopefully the pandemic will be over sooner rather than later. Of course, we've all been saying that for who knows how long now. And uh, at least where I'm at, things really feel like they're pretty much normal now and our case numbers are um, pretty low um, although I haven't checked them this week really but um, I, I, I've heard that it's been you know, I think Japan last I checked was going through a fourth wave and so it's been really tough on arcades over there because uh, due to emergency orders they have to keep shutting them down um, although the locations are doing everything they can when they can be open to um, promote safety and uh, social distancing, all that stuff, and so um, I really hope that the Japanese arcade industry survives, um, because uh, from some of the stuff I've been hearing, it's uh, pretty dire, um, but um, yeah, so at least we have this virtual walk around uh, to do, so hope you enjoyed that, and um, I'd be happy to do any other one of uh, another one of these walkarounds because I've seen these uh, on U.S. arcades and and uh, before, uh, not too many here on the states, but um, yeah. And so let me just check the chat here and make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> Yeah, I want to go to this arcade too. Like, if I if there wasn't a pandemic on right now, and uh, it would make sense to head over to Japan, uh, you have the Olympics going on, and you could go and check out places like this and uh, Super Nintendo World and uh, Joypolis and all that stuff. And so, um, yeah, I would really uh, a Taito Hey, yeah, that would be really cool too. Um, so that's uh, yeah, I'm right there with you. The day that I do get to Japan, I'm probably going to want to go visit the arcades first. <laughs> um, so, uh, one of these days in the future. Um, yeah, and so, uh, yeah, that's uh, all for this live stream. So, thanks for tuning in and watching. And um, soon, I hope to have, it might not be a live stream. Uh, this may just be a pre-recorded thing. Um, but I have been talking with, uh, interviewing J Eugene Jarvis again. And this time we're going to just talk about cruising, the cruising series. And so I know a lot of you out there are into uh, cruising blast and uh, some of the older cruisings. And so I'll talk with the guy who made the games, and uh, we'll get into you know, what brought cruising from an idea to an arcade machine, and uh, see if we can glean his brain for anything else. And so I hope to do that sometime this month. Uh, just um, need to reach out to him again and hammer down a time but uh, yeah that is uh, all for this time so we'll see you soon catch you on the next video and again 